All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is an example on convolution. Now, convolution is one of those um, gray areas that we sometimes tend to confuse ourselves with, uh, especially with professors that, you know, because there are a lot of steps that are involved and professors, what they do is that they combine the steps and all of a sudden, you know, we find ourselves into these areas that we don't really understand what's going on. And so this um, example is, is a typical example um, on convolution. Now, once you understand this and the way to do it, then of course you'll be able to solve any other convolution problem. So uh, this is going to be a, a pretty long video though, so you're going to have to bear with me because I want to put all the details, uh, all the steps that, that are involved into finding out your graphical representation on convolution. Now the idea behind convolution, essentially what it is, is that um, you are just multiplying two signals and you're finding out the uh, graphical representation of that end result of that multiplication. That's what it is. And so you can use it, you can use um, a mathematical expression just like over here. Uh, I mean, imagine doing integration of this. I mean, you know, that will take you a while. And that's the reason why we actually use a graphical method. And so there are steps that are involved. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and uh, do this one, uh, you know, using using the steps. And now um, the first thing that, okay, here, I forgot to mention that, um, of course, here they're using X of T, Y of T, blah, 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 because they are shifting uh, Y of T. They chose to shift Y of T, whatever, but these are just dummy variables. It could be just about anything. And here also you could have X of, um, I mean, Y of tau, X of T minus tau. So either way you do it, you don't have to follow let me let me write this down what i'm saying what i'm saying is you can depending on which one you flip the one that you're flipping is the one that you're actually using t minus tau so um this is what we have y of t in this case here right minus x of tau h of tau t minus tau or depending on which one you, you're shifting, this is also equal by the properties of convolution. This is also equal to h of h of tau x of t minus tau. So either way, it's the same thing. I just want you to, to understand that. Okay. All right. So let's erase this so we have space. Now that we understand that, the, f the two biggest issues I guess that students have with convolution is that which signal do I flip and the second is how do I know the limit those are the two biggest um, problems that we have with convolution which signal because you're given two signals now which one do you do you, do you flip because you are going to flip one of them and then the other thing is like okay how much how much um, how do I find out the limits how much do I actually shift how do I find out the limits, etc., etc.? So we're gonna find how to do that, etc. Okay. All right. Now the first thing, given two signals, which one to flip? To answer the answer to the question is that flip the signal with a shorter signal, time domain signal. Now between x of t and h of t. Well, first of all, we have to change the t to tau. That's that's what I should have started with. So you change these. To tau first of all because our final answer would be we are integrating by t that's why okay so change those to tau okay all right so between x of tau and h of tau which one do I flip I'm flipping and this is the tip right you flip always flip at least try to flip no not try but like that's the tip I mean you know depends on the signal of course but typically what you want to shift is the easiest signal and the easiest signal is typically the shortest signal so between x of tau and h of tau the shortest signal is h of tau so we are going to maintain x of tau and we are going to shift h of tau now sometimes you have signals where they're both equal or whatever so in that case of course you don't really have to make a choice anyway but in this case we are going to shift the shortest signal and in this case the shortest signal is h of tau 
So we are maintaining x of tau. So let's let me let me do it bigger so that you see the shifting process because that's the confusing part. Okay. All right. I'm doing it big so that you see. So this is still x of tau, right? It doesn't really. Okay, and we have a two here. So we are shifting, let me use a different color in this case. We are shifting h of tau. So first of all, again, look at this formula, okay? So we're maintaining, we're maintaining um, x of, which one are we maintaining in this case? Yeah, we're maintaining x of tau and we are shifting h of tau. In this case, they use y, but in our case, it's h of. So first, we, what we want to do is we flip, we multiply by minus one, because this is h of tau. We don't have, we, this is what we want to have, h of t minus tau. So what we do is we multiply this by minus one, and we add t. So this will become, I guess h of that will become, okay? This is what we're going to have. This is going to be so when you multiply a function by a minus, that means you are flipping it. But when you're adding, you are shifting. So adding or subtracting means shifting, but multiplying or dividing means flipping across, you know, depending on. on, on this is h of minus tau. We flipped it. So this becomes minus one, mul I mean, multiplying by minus one. And this is still, of course, still zero. And so when we add t, we shift it to the left. We shift it to the left, okay? So this would become our point of origin. I'm being lazy right now, but And this would, this would be, this is our tau still. So you're adding a t, so t plus zero, the origin, point of origin, and then t minus one, okay? So this is what we did. Hopefully you understand what I just did there though. I don't wanna confuse you. So we multiply by minus one, which means we flip it and then we add t, which means shifting to the left. Now, if this was minus t, then it would be shifting it to the right. But since it's just a t, we are shifting it to the left. So we're just adding it to the edge. So t minus one and t plus zero, which is t. Okay, so now we can start our shifting method and start moving forward in the function. Okay, so let's use, so that's x of tau. Okay, now this is, this is a three, so we wanna make sure we understand that this is three, okay. So it's a little above three. So what we're doing right now, once we find out which one we flip, we flipping and we shifting, we have to find the limits, and that's what we're trying to find. So to find the limits, we have to find the regions of overlapping. So we're not going to try to integrate right now. We're just finding the overlapping regions. So this is t minus one. This is our t. Okay. All right. Let me uh, use a different color here so that I will put my limits here so you see exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's call these overlapping regions, if you will. Overlapping regions. Okay? All right. So now, um, overlapping.
None. Nothing. Nothing happened. None. Okay. Now we can start moving this. Let's delete. It's going to be a lot of erasing. So uh, let's see here. Okay. So we're moving, we're moving, moving. We're moving the, our H of T signal to the right. We're shifting it. We're going forward. Okay. So this is what we have. So it will be T would be here. And we have T minus one. The reason why it's above this is because this is a three here and we had a two here for X of T. So this is a three. Okay. So we know that overlapping occurs when somewhere here, we know, of course it's here, but I'm saying what we first got to do is understanding that the overlapping occurs when T minus one is, is negative, is less than, um, is less than zero. Okay. So T minus one is less than or equal to zero. I mean, you know, it could be, it could be here, the overlapping, cause I'm, I'm thinking that I don't know where the overlapping is. I mean, of course this, we can see that the overlapping is here, but that's besides the point. I want to show you how to, in general, how to, you know, how to approach the problem, generally speaking. So t, t minus overlapping occurs when T minus one is equal to, uh, is, is less than zero or equal to zero. Okay. And when T is positive, because you're entering that region. So when T is positive, okay. Or equal to zero somewhere here. So your first overlapping occurs uh, between zero and one. Yeah, because this is T uh, less than one and T greater than zero. So this is your second, your second overlapping. The first overlapping region is when T is negative, there's nothing happens. So your second one is when T is between zero and one. Okay. So overlap occurs. We just say overlap number one. We don't know. We, we're not thinking, I'm not saying this is, this is where it happens. I'm saying the region in general. So you got to think generally speaking, because <clears throat> we, we have those questions, right? Like, okay, how do I know the limit? How, how much do I move forward? And I'm trying to tell you that you don't know, act, act like you don't know. So the, the region of overlapping, that's what we're trying to find. Not the actual point of overlapping, but the region in general. Okay. So overlap occurs here, somewhere here somewhere between T somewhere here, you know? Okay. All right. Let's erase that and move forward anyway. Okay. Let me, uh, rewrite this. So there's still a two here, you know, okay. Moving forward with our function of H of T moving. We have, we are here somewhere here. So RT is somewhere here and we here T minus one is still here. So we know, of course we see the overlapping, but that's not the point. Again, it's not the point. We're looking for the regions. So overlapping occurs somewhere when T minus one becomes positive now. Okay. Because we are in a positive region, positivity. So our third region is when T minus one becomes positive, we don't know where T is. I'm not, I don't know where, but I know for a fact that T minus one is positive and T looking at here, we're looking at here and T is less than or equal to two. Okay. Again, because you don't know how much you're moving. So you're making assumptions right now. You don't know because we, I could have moved, I could have moved the yellow line all the way here. But all I know is, is it does not over for sure when I'm moving and shifting H of T, it doesn't cross two after it's not after two, it's somewhere around here. The overlapping occurs somewhere around here. 
we can see it in, in our eyes right now that here, but again, to answer the question of, of the students, like, okay, how much do I move? So we're trying to find how much you are supposed to be moving by finding the region itself, region, somewhere around here. So we know that when we move this function here, it's going to be less than 2 somewhere here, overlapping occurs, and then the t minus 1 is positive. So it's going to be, so your t, this is t greater than 1, don't worry about equals or whatever, but, and your t less than 2, okay? So your second overlapping region is between, okay, what is between 2 and 1, t greater than 1 and less than 2. So we know overlap occurs here as well somewhere between that okay let's erase and keep going you're somewhere here t is here and t minus one is here we know that overlapping occurs somewhere here okay so it occurs when t minus 1 is less than 2, somewhere, you know, less than or equal to 2, it could be, you know, it could be close to 2 as well, and when t is greater than 2, it's outside of that region, we know that, it's clear to our eyes, okay, so it's, it's greater than 2, it's outside of that, so definitely greater than 2, so here we have t less than 3, and t, I mean, yeah, less than 2, so we know that t there's another overlapping region between 2 and 3, okay? Less than 3. So the overlap occurs here as well. So I really, really recommend you to do it this way, the region first, before you even find out where, you know, overlapping or whatever. Because professors, they skip these steps, and these are really, really important steps, okay? So we can keep moving until we see no more uh, overlapping, okay? So moving forward, t minus 1 and t. So, there's no overlap. There's no overlap when? When when is there not overlap? When t minus 1 is greater than 2. Because we are outside. We are outside of the x or region here. So t minus 1. When t minus 1 is absolutely greater than 2. Here, see, the, see this here? See the um, h, r, h of t? It's outside of 2. So when t is greater than 3, there's no overlap. So we can here, we can put here, when t is greater, t is greater than 3, no overlap, none. Okay? So now we have our regions of overlapping. Now we have to find exactly where the overlap occurs. All right? That's what we're going to do. So now that we know there's no overlapping when t is less than zero. So we can literally go um, over at uh, when t is between zero and one. So we can come back here and start now. Let's do it this way. H of whatever, H of tau. Now it start looking at where exactly the overlapping occurs. So we, just like we drew before, we have we have tau t here, okay, and we have t minus one here. I could have started with this though, but then you would be like, okay, how do you know how much? And I don't, you know, so I want you to understand region, okay? So where is the overlap between these? Clearly. You can see it here. So this is 3, of course. Okay. Where is the overlap uh, between these two functions? So the overlap is, this is overlapping. This is what they have in common. Okay. The overlapping is here. Okay. So now we can start integrating. So we know that t less than 0 is no overlapping, so it doesn't really need to, for, for, for us to do it. So over here, y of t is now, we are integrating between h 
between uh, 0 and t, this is a 0 here, this is the actual region of overlap. We know that between 0 and minus 1, something happens, overlapping occurs, but the actual overlapping is between 0 and t. Okay, now we have a 3 here and 2, so the function becomes 2 times 3 becomes 6. So this is what we have, basically. The overlapping region becomes this, taller, and becomes this way. This is the overlapping region. So this is a 6 here. Okay, so we're integrating 6, 2 times 3. You can do it 2 times 3, uh, but really what it is is that uh, you're looking at the region itself. So it's bounded by... Uh, the, the multiplication of this two, so 6, because really, again, convolution is multiplication anyway, so 6 delta tau, okay? So now all we're doing is just integrating, so this is 6t between 0 and t, I mean, sort of 6 tau, of course, 6 tau, always mixing these two, 6 tau, so this is equal to 6t. 6 and t, because you replace that and you put 0 and whatever. So our first y of t in this particular region is uh, uh, 6, we can put it here, y of t is equal to 6 of t. Alright, so keep moving again, let's erase and come back. I am somewhere here between 1 and 2. Between 1 and 2. Where? Okay. So where is my overlapping? What do they have in common? Of course, we can see it clearly here. We could see it uh, clearly. So this is your, this is still your t, and this is your t minus t. Um, okay. This here, this is where the overlapping occurs, t minus 1. So where is your overlapping? So your overlapping is, your, your function is between t minus 1 and t, that's where the overlapping is, 6, 2, this, is, this was a 2, and this is a 3, the function is a 3, okay? So 6 delta tau. Again, this is going to be 6 tau, 6 t minus 1, and t. This is just basic uh, integration. So this is 6 t minus 6 t plus 6. Wait a minute. Yeah, plus 6. So your y of t is equal to 6. So between 1 and 2, your y of t is equal to 6. We can see it. Okay? Again, erase and come back. Between 2 and 3. We know 3 is here. 3 is somewhere here. 2 is here. Between 2 and 3. Wait a minute. Yeah. No, that's not, that's not what I meant. Take that back. Scratch that. Okay. So now we are here. The function moves back here. So we have t minus 1 and t. Where is my overlapping? My overlapping is here. Okay. So my y of t clearly is between t minus 1 and 2. Overlapping occurs here, you know, in this particular case, um, t minus 1. So after you find your region, it's actually pretty easy. It's t minus 1 to 2. t minus 1 to 6 delta tau. So this is 6 tau, t minus 1, and t 2. And so this is 6 times 2 is 12. Minus 
60 plus 6, right? Right. So this is minus 60 plus 18, 12 plus 6. Okay, so here we have y of t is equal to minus 60 plus 18. And we know that over 3, there's no overlapping. So we have three functions. Now we just have to put them together using these intervals. And this is the reason why it was important for you to find out these uh, region of overlapping because we could have started with this typically professors that's what they start oh, where's the overlapping blah 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 and all of a sudden you are okay how do I know how much I'm moving so this was the point of doing this really overlapping occurs between these and that all right so now we're done with the uh, actual convolutions pretty easy right we know that over three there's nothing that happened so we just put these functions together using logic I guess if you will so now let me use a different color let me use that okay so now what do we have what do we have is this is what we have this is our zero okay this is now going to be t and this is going to be whatever. So, what do we have? t less than 0, nothing. There's nothing here. When t is less than 0, nothing happens. Let's put 1 here. Let's put 1. Let's put 2. Let's put 3, whatever. Okay. So, t less than 0, nothing happens. There's nothing. Between 0 and 1, we have y of t is equal to 6 of t. I mean 60 so this is just a, a straight line I mean uh, you're just graphing 6 of t basically like when x is when t is 0 y is 0 so we're here but when if 6 if t is 1 then y this is y y is 6 so we are somewhere here let's just put 6 in there and so our 6 of t becomes this line right here between 0 and 1 okay so this is between 0 and 1 we have that line right there next between 1 and 2 we have our y of t is 6 so this is just between 1 and 2 this is just y of t becoming 6 so we're stopping there Okay, now between 2 and 3, between 2 and 3, the function is minus 60 plus 18. So if, if, if for instance, if t is 3, then your y is 0. So if t is 3, y is 0, and you have a negative slope, so you're just graphing it down here. Okay, and if t is greater than 3, there's, there's nothing. So this is your convoluted signal between those two, and that's it.